Hi, I'm Emma and today I'm going to make something out of this bit of linen. It used to be my favourite table runner till a candle did this to it. Have you got something similar that you couldn't bring yourself to throw out? I've got an idea of how to rescue it. Keep watching and I'll show you how. You can press the description arrow here to see all the stuff that you'll need for this project. I'm going to make a roller towel to hang on my oven door handle. You can do this using something that you already have and it won't take long and you'll have a stylish towel to be proud of every time you wash and dry your hands, which let's face it is a lot at the moment. I love sewing, have done ever since I was a child. I worked at Norman Hartnell and made dresses for the Queen Mother. So I've got lots of bits and pieces to choose from. Because I'm making a hand towel that needs to be washed at 60 degrees, I'm using my piece of linen, a two centimetre wide cotton snap fastening tape. Because it can be washed at the same high temperature or you can use Velcro or buttons, whatever you've got. I'm going to check my measurements. The width is fine and the length needs to be double the drop from the door handle plus three centimetres for seam allowances. That's 1.5 centimetres for each end. It's not going to get caught in the drawer below the oven. The fabric is 39 centimetres wide that's 15 inches, and 91 centimetres long, 36 inches. I've cut the burnt piece off and I've measured it to the length that I need, marking it with pins. And now using a ruler, I'm going to draw a line out across the width of the fabric to mark where you're going to cut and this will become the short edge where I'll place the fastener tape. I'm cutting along the grain of the fabric that means cutting in the direction of the yarns, <laughs> basically in a straight line at 90 degrees to the selvage. Now I'm going to prepare the hems at each end. On the short ends, press the raw edge over by 1.5 centimetres to the wrong side of the fabric at one end and the right side at the other end. This will allow the tape to lie flat when it's fastened. I leave the iron on the fabric as I measure the hem to make a nice crease but only for a second or two and that's fine for linen. Place the tape over the raw edge so that it lines up with the pressed edge. Cutting enough length for a one centimetre allowance at each end. If you're using Velcro, place it in the same way, but don't fold it under because it doesn't fray. And then place it in the same way. On a firm surface, making sure you've got the fastener tape the correct way up, fold under the raw edge 
and line it up with the long edge of the fabric and line it up with the folded edge too and then pin it all the way along and fold the other raw edge at the other end, matching it with the side. Just make sure you've tucked everything in so that it's all sitting nice and straight. Then do the other end making sure you've got the correct side up so that it's going to fasten together correctly. Okay, I've set up the machine and I've put a small zipper foot on here so that it can go past the poppers as I go by, or fasteners. Um, and um, I've put white thread on the top because that's the colour of my tape. And I've put uh, this colour on my spool but really you can use whatever you want or even a contrasting uh, thread would be nice. Um, and I'm going to start a little way down the tape to start with because it, it will be easier with all the thickness here to start in an area where you haven't got folds and extra thickness. And you just stitch carefully along the edge and we'll stitch all the way round And when you get to the corner, you can make sure you leave the needle in the fabric and then lift the presser foot and pivot the fabric 90 degrees. I'm going to take that pin out as well so that it's not in the way of the needle, holding it with my other finger to keep it in place. And then the, so that it doesn't mess up the, the uh, fabric here, we need to support the back of the presser foot. So I'm going to use a shim, this is called. So you put that at the back, lower the presser foot. Oops. And then stitch and that will get pushed out of the way as I go. And again, I'm going to leave my needle in the fabric, lift the presser foot, pivot 90 degrees, put a shim underneath, lower it and do the final side. Place the shim under the foot at the back. And we'll be carefully here. If you were put, placing the Velcro, sewing the Velcro on here, um, we just need to, you can, don't fold under the end, otherwise it would be too thick to stitch. But sew it in the same way, all the way around the edges. And when you get to the end, make sure you do a few back stitches, just to make sure that you're securing the threads doesn't need to be beautifully finished this so we can just take it out and snip it with our blade on the back of the machine and that's all attached and then I'll do the same on the other end before you stitch the other end just make sure 
you have orientated the um, tape on the right side because it's much easier to pin it again rather than un undo all the stitching and I have so I'm just making sure I can do that before I stitch the other side and that's it finished you could use this idea for any towel that's starting to go a bit at the corners sew a bit of tape on it and give it a new lease of life in your kitchen if there's anything you want to know ask me in the comments It looks great, doesn't it? I hope you've enjoyed seeing how to make a roller towel. Thanks for watching. And remember, keep washing and drying your hands. And I'll see you next time on Make It Do It.